If you follow me on Twitter, you know this video has been a long time coming, talking about Andrew Nemhard and his potential fit with the Phoenix Suns. I mean, yeah, I've just become a little bit obsessed with Andrew Nemhard, watching him play for Gonzaga, and uh, this kid is, you know, the most similar prospect to Chris Paul we've seen in the last 15 years. And the fact that he might be available in the late second round and the Suns might have the opportunity to draft him or trade up not even that much to draft him. Like, this is a can't-miss prospect for the Suns. When you find a guy that's this similar to your star player who's aging, this is a guy that you absolutely have to jump on and make sure you get on your roster. Despite what people talk about, you know, we don't want to get more younger players. The fact of the matter is, is that the Suns always have more spots in their roster, and at the end of the day, he can even just be a two-way contract. So... Why not target a guy like Andrew Nemhart, who's very available, it's not, he's not going to be too difficult to acquire, I mean he's averaging 8 points and 5 assists per game. And we'll get into it, it's a lot more about the eye test with uh, Nemhart uh, in comparison to his actual counting stats, but uh, Nemhart, he is going to be a fantastic player in the league, and under the tutelage of Chris Paul, he's going to be fantastic and could really be the point guard of the future for the Phoenix Suns. So I would really wish... I really hope the Suns decide to pick up this guy and take at least take a look at him and consider drafting him or signing him as an undrafted free agent because it just makes way, way too much sense. So today's video is going to be a bit longer because I'm going to be looking at some of his highlights at the end and that's a few minutes, I think that's like seven minutes of highlights. I don't really know how to edit well, so that's where, why we're just looking at highlights. But if you want to look at full game footage of him, I'm going to link the two best games he's had this season against uh, UCLA and Texas Tech. So I'm going to link the highlights to those games and also those full games. And I'm also going to link a channel that has 9 out of the 11 games Gonzaga's played this year. Uh, they uh, This one channel, they just upload a ton of NCAA games, like the full games with the commercials edited out. Really cool channel, and if you want to watch uh, these games back on replay, definitely uh, subscribe to the Draftmatic. There's going to be a lot of links in the description. There's a lot to talk about today. Uh, but yeah, if you want to watch the full game footage, I'm not going to be putting full game footage, and I'm just looking at highlights because, yeah, I don't know how to edit. Anyways, let's take a look. Here's our overview of Andrew Nemhard, and then we'll get into the highlights after looking at this. Nemhard is a senior at Gonzaga. He's 6'5", 195, 22 years old, uh, right around the time of recording this video. And yeah, I mean, it's it's Nemard. He's projected to be a 45 to 60 in that draft range. The guy I respect the most in the draft community, Hoops Intellect, link in the description to his channel, is projecting him to go 47. And we all, or I think he's 47th in his big board, actually. I don't think it was a mock draft. And I think NBA Draft.net also had him around the 40s range, but a lot of other places have him as an undrafted free agent. That's where the Suns could really move in. Suns currently own the 60th pick in the second round. And I mean, Nemar might fall to there, but you could also consider trading up. Trading up uh, in today's NBA, especially like moving a few spots up in the second rounds, will just cost a small price of a few million dollars. Well, that's not exactly a small price. This is a question of, will Robert Sarver pay it? I don't know. Couldn't tell you at this point. If someone convinces him it's a good enough move, then maybe he will. He's averaging 8.7 points, 5.0 assists, and 3.2 rebounds per game during the season so far. He's really only had two big games this season. The two we're going to be talking about, UCLA and Texas Tech. Stepping up against ranked opponents is, you know, somewhat impressive. Uh, good job at Nemhard taking a step back when he's playing those conference opponents a lot weaker, you know, weaker teams that they've played against this season. He's also averaging 1.6 steals and 2.4 turnovers per game. That is a 2.1 assist to turnover ratio. In comparison, uh, Chris Paul, he averaged 2.3 assist to turnover ratio during his sophomore year of college. And he's shooting 42.7% from the field, 31% from three, and 70% from the free throw line. Those stats don't look good, but once again, he's had a, a really slow start to the season, and I expect those numbers to pick up. I think uh, so far in his college career, he's shooting 44% from the field, 33% from three, and 76% from free throw. That's just off the top of my head. And 
Yeah, Nemar. Uh, just looking at his stats, comparing him to other point guards that are very successful in the league right now, the guy he's most comparable to is Drew Holiday out of UCLA during, I think it was 06. And or not 0, 09, I think 2009 is when he played with UCLA. And uh, yeah, that very, very similar stat line between the two players. Some other guys in comparison, Fred Van Vliet is a very similar guy in terms of a senior who put up, put up very similar stats. Van Vliet uh, noticeably was in a weaker conference and playing weaker competition and had a higher usage percentage. But otherwise, those two stat lines really match up and some other names out there, Kyle Lowry, also a very similar stat line there. And let's take a look at his strengths, just, you know, eye test type stuff, uh, stuff, strengths. He's a pick and roll ball handler. I mean, there's a reason that I'm comparing him to Chris Paul and I think he's so similar to him. It's the way he uh, masterfully operates the pick and roll. Uh, he's just very, very good at it for being a college player. This is before he's in the NBA with NBA talented big men. Well, I mean, granted he's playing with Drew Timmy has been fantastic. He is an NBA big man in the, f the future, but you know, you give him an actual NBA, like an amazing NBA player like DeAndre Aiden, he's gonna look so much better. And uh, he just really knows how to operate, get the defender on his back and make something happen. He can shoot the mid range, he can drive to the basket. He knows how to dump it off to the big or kick it out to a shooter. He is very good at finding those open shooters when the rotations do give him that open pass. And you know, a lot of the time, maybe the shooters just miss it. And that's why he doesn't have nearly as many assists per game as he might average when he comes into the league. And uh, yeah, I just see a lot of the time, especially against Texas Tech, if you guys go back to rewatch that, that game was very recently, and if you take a look at that one, he made quite a few great passes, ones he heated up from three, and his opponents just missed, and he could have had quite a few more assists during that game. Uh, another thing he does, just like Chris Paul, he's very good at controlling the pace of the game. Uh, in contrast to Chris Paul, he's amazing on the fast break. Uh, one of the reasons why the Gonzaga offense was so deadly last year, I think it was the most, I think it was the most efficient offense in NCAA history and a large part of it was due to the fast break, which Andrew Nemard was probably running like 70% of those fast breaks with Jalen Suggs and Joella Yayi and the rest of that Gonzaga squad. And it's not just him running the fast break. I mean, he's insanely efficient in the fast break, you know, finding the open guy, finishing with his 6'5 uh, frame. He's also, you know, able to slow the game down, go into a pick and roll, find the best shots instead of, you know, jacking something up early. And... That type of ability is so similar to Chris Paul. It's just not the type of composure and maturity you see out of other college basketball players. Nemhard's already presenting this as a 22 year old. Even Chris Paul, I mean, I mean, uh, th there's just not anyone you can really compare him to, or no other player can really be compared to Chris Paul this similarly. I mean, maybe the name that's going to jump to mind is Sharif Cooper who just got drafted last year. But Sharif Cooper is a lot more dynamic and has a lot more reliance upon his quickness. When you see Nemard play, it's just very similar to how we've seen Chris Paul play and operate the game of basketball. And these two factors are just so similar to Chris Paul that you have to think the Suns have their eye on Nemard, especially considering their last game against Texas Tech that I've been talking about was in Footprint Center. Like it is in the Suns arena. There's no excuse for them missing this game. There's no game that night or anything. Like the guys should have been in the arena, you know, the squad and the, the general management should have been in there watching games happen. And they would have seen Andrew Nemard. He had a great game. He had 16 points, hit four threes. Uh, he does a great job of pushing the ball in the fast break. He's also 6'5". He is massive uh, in comparison to Chris Paul, who measures in around six foot six one, depending on where you're looking. And... Yeah, uh, he really does use his size well. He's a solid finisher, uh, somewhat inconsistent as he might, you know, figure out from that 43% field goal shooting. Like, he's not the most consistent guy, but he has that 6'5 frame. If you add on some more muscle, I think he can become a much better finisher than Chris Paul has been, especially in the last, you know, few years or so. He's also a solid defender. No means like Chris Paul's impact this season, but uh, using a 6'5", uh, frame once again, like just, that's pretty, pretty cool for a point guard. And, uh, he's done a great job. Gonzaga absolutely has not been a defensive hole, maybe even better than, you know, Jalen Suggs and Joel Ayayi at times, you know, two NBA guys who were drafted partly because of their defense. And 
I think Nemar never has been a defensive weakness for that team. He always steps up. He puts an effort. He's solid at stealing the ball. And yeah, he gets stuff done as a defender as well. And he can also kind of, uh, he can hunt for threes. This is one of his biggest differences from Chris Paul is that he's very good at finding that three point jump shot, whether it be finding that step back three. I mean, Chris Paul, we've seen him do it uh, just most recently. He's been doing it. You know, he just does the same thing every time when he's hunting for threes. He gets a switch onto the big man and he just does a one dribble pull up and they never know how to guard him for some reason, even though he always does the same thing. Otherwise, he just kind of sits there and maybe gets a catch and shoot three. In comparison, you see Nemhard, a lot of the time he's moving around like a natural shooter. And when you set up screens for your point guard, when you have these playmakers away from the ball like the Suns have with Booker, with Mikhail Bridges, guys who can make those passes, uh, then you can get Nemard rolling off of these passes and you can get you can get screens set for your point guard to open up for threes. And the Suns really haven't incorporated that into their offense before, but this is an avenue you can go with Nemard. He can he can hit threes off of movement and he can also hit threes off the dribble. And uh, that's something the Suns have been looking for, more pull up three point shooters and more. Yeah, guys who can hit the three and create the three off the dribble. That's something they've been wanting. He's also a great passer. He's no Chris Paul and, you know, the wizardry of his passing, but he's really solid at finding the open man, and sometimes that's all you need as your point guard, you know, a guy who can control the game and make that open pass when you need him to. And, you know, just give him more experience in the league, give him the tutelage and the tutoring of Chris Paul, he's going to look so much better as a passer. And finally, he's got a solid off-dribble mid-range jump shot just like Chris Paul, it's something he's going to be working on throughout his career, but... For now, it looks pretty good, and he's been hitting it, and yeah, that's definitely one of the strengths in Nemard. When you look at his weaknesses, it's not a lot of tangible stuff, other than, you know, it's a small role and a small sample size. He's playing with a ton of talent at Gonzaga. Last year, he had three NBA players, uh, yeah, three players got drafted into the NBA. Uh, I mean, Ayayi was one of the first UDFAs, so... You know, you got three guys in the NBA. This year, he's playing with six guys, I counted on their roster, that are gonna make the NBA. And it's just like, you got a ton of talent there. Everyone's trying to compete. But Nemard's still stepping up as that point guard. He just doesn't have a high usage rate. And uh, he's just been solid, you know? He's doing what he needs to do to win games. The two games he struggled in have been the two losses for his team, actually, against Alabama and against Duke. And it's very clear that Nemhard is, you know, the reason why this team is going to be successful or unsuccessful with Gonzaga. And that really does come down to his role. You know, he's going to have to step up to win those big games against those ranked teams like Duke, like Alabama, like he did against Texas Tech. You know, he did step up against Texas Tech and UCLA and won those games for his team. Currently, against ranked teams, he's averaging 12 points, six and a half assists, and three steals, three rebounds per game, and I think around three turnovers, just off the top of my head. And uh, in their five ranked matchups, Texas being their fifth ranked matchup, I haven't mentioned. And yeah, uh, Nemard, he's been solid and he stepped up big time in two big matchups. Number one, UCLA, uh, number 25, Texas Tech. And we need to see that more consistent uh, Lee out of him. And yeah, let's just throw all of his weaknesses on screen. I thought I put consistency in here, but... He's a bit inefficient at times, and he's have, he has these off games. That's what I mean by uh, consistency. You know, he's having these games where he isn't great. You know, you're playing against lower-level competition. Why don't you just let guys like Drew Timmy and these other quality players dominate and win the games for you? I think that's kind of where Nemhart's ended up, and I honestly need to go back and watch more of those games because, yeah, I mean, they're lower-level teams, but there's still stuff to be learned from those games. Also, it's a lot reliant upon the eye test. Watching Nemhard play, it's really a lot about how he plays the game and not how those stats actually look. And finally, how does he translate to the NBA? Uh, what's his leadership like? How is he going to play, you know, in a bigger role in the NBA? And I think we can give him time and develop him and then turn him into a starting caliber guy because Chris Paul's still got a lot more time in the league. Cameron Payne looks like our second point guard. So Nemhard coming in as our third point guard would give him a lot of time to get better and adjust to the league put him in some spot minutes, and then just get him better every single day and working hard with him. And Nemard, I'm not the most like confident in his work ethic as I have been with other prospects, and a lot of other prospects I've been very confident in their success. I'm not as confident in his work ethic, 
But it is interesting to talk about. He's always been playing basketball since being a young kid. His father's really been pushing him to play basketball. And yeah, uh, he just loves the sport. He's always been playing it. And, you know, uh, I think as a junior in high school, he nearly died. And, uh, you know, in physical ther therapy, you know, like his only way back was basketball and getting better. And he's they're like, uh, I have an article about it, which is going to be linked in the description. There's so many links going to be in the description. Uh, talking about how the first thing, like the first part of physical therapy, when they realize like this kid's going to recover is him just like dribbling a basketball. And yeah, uh, Nemard, I'm not entirely confident in his work ethic, but I think he's got it. And I think maybe he's not like the super legendary work ethic guy, but he's got enough of it to be very successful. Anyways, I think we're about time to take a look at some of his highlights and Let's full screen this and crop this to make it look good. There we go. And let's just take a look at his game against UCLA. And I'll just point out what I see out of him. And I'll probably not interrupt it too much. Who cares about monetization? You know, I'll just let it play. Uh, so Nemard right there gets the rebound, pushing the pace. And what does he do? He uses the size and he finishes right around the rim. And let's see, what is he going to do here? I believe I watched almost entirely uh, this game and much of the Texas Tech game. There again, th there it is. Off movements, one dribble, three-point jump shot. That's the type of thing the Suns have been kind of missing. And Shamit's done a solid job at it, but Nemard can bring that extra dyna dynamic right away. Making a solid pass to the open shooter. That's uh, Watson, from what I remember. Or I think it's Hinton. I don't know, I'm, I'm blinking. There's another solid finish. I mean, that's using a 6'5 frame against the small Tiger Campbell at UCLA. I think he's like six foot 5'11". And he's using a size there to finish over a smaller defender. Then we see him, you know, just making the solid pass. Julian Strother, he's been killing it from three this year. His drop stock's gone way up, and he hits him for that open three. And he does a solid job of, you know, just pushing the, pushing the pace. Look at this. Uh, Nemard taking a look at this play. Sees Timmy there, sealing off one defender, and he finishes over uh, a, a little bit of smaller defender. And once again, this is a lot of his game is taking advantage of these, you know, uh, two on three situations where he can just use his uh, just great size and great passing ability to finish in these fast break situations where the defenders might not always be ready. And here we go. Here's uh, operating the pick and roll. Look at that. Defender comes down to clamp down on Drew Timmy. You know, a 18 point per game score. He hits Chet Holmgren for the open three, which he's going to hit. I think he's, I don't know what he's shooting this year, actually. And look at that. He's just attacking Jamie uh, Hami Hawkins' angles and uh, <laughs> Hami Hawkins' ankles. And look at that. He's just crossed out of the frame, step back, hit the mid range jump shot. That's a bit similar to Chris Fall, a bit reminiscent. And. Here we go again. This looks like a three off movement from what I remember. Well, this time he doesn't shoot the three and instead he's just, you know, surveying, looking for the open man, doesn't find anything. And look at that. This time he drops his defender right into the screen. He falls and Nemhard hits the pull up jump shot. Well, it wasn't really a pull up jump shot at that point. It was just kind of wide open. And uh, let's take a look at what happens here. Nemhard off the screen the pick and roll he's got two guys on him and oh who look look who's open hunter salas cuts in into the paint and he makes a tough pass over a defender and going against the full court press i thought i remembered what happened that possession but i did not uh hickman hitting uh nemard and uh, yeah i've really enjoyed watching gonzaga just talking about it in slower possession, and Nemard has been one of the highlights, especially, oh my god, he, <laughs> that stop was nasty. Hawkins is on the floor, and uh, yeah, he hits the mid-range jump shot. And he's usually not this flashy, but man, uh, he did some great things against UCLA uh, in a massive game, and, you know, one versus two matchup. Feeding Timmy inside against a mismatch defender was way out of, the, I'm not sure where the defender went wasn't paying good enough attention there but yeah he just finds the open man a lot of the time and here's Nemard st staying in control that's one of his biggest things is 
even though he's, you know, I'll touch on the turnover prone side at 2.4 turnovers per game. A lot of the time for how much ball uh, handling uh, role, you know, how, how much he has to do that for the Gonzaga team. He is very composed and he's very, you know, he doesn't turn over the ball all too much because of his ball handle. And that's impressive. And that's, you know, once again, another quality that's very similar to Chris Paul. And there we go, hitting a long pass to Chet Holmgren. Uh, this trap started to work well during the last few minutes of the game. So finding a uh, score against this, this full court press that they're running is going to be a big deal for the Gonzaga team to make sure they close out against UCLA. And uh, Nemard right here, chewing down the clock, hitting Chet Holmgren. And you got to put a hand up, man. He's going to shoot over a guy like... God, I can't remember his name. Uh, Johnny, G he's going to shoot over a guy like Johnny Juzang is 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, all the time. You know, that's what you do when you have a 7-foot shooter. Anyways, let's take a look against Texas Tech in the footprint center, as we all know and love. Andrew Nemard hitting Chet Holmgren once again. 6'8", player trying to close out against a 7-foot guy. Of course, you got to hit Chet Holmgren who can hit those threes. And there's a good contest. And once again, you're pushing it on the break. Look for uh, Nemard. He's wide. Uh, kind of open there. No, there wasn't the plan for the play. I'm, I watch mainly the second half of this game. Uh, Nemard. There we go. Stops. Stays under control. Hits rather for a little bit of a float, uh, push shot, I would say. Push shot. And Salas hitting Hickman. Timmy to Nemard. What is he going to do? He's got a bigger defender on him. He's going to attack his ankles and step back into a three. Look at him hunting for threes. That's kind of pretty reminiscent of Chris Paul. You know, we've seen that him do that quite a bit against those bigger defenders where he goes downhill, you know, uh, just like one or two dribbles downhill, crosses back and hits the jump shot from three. Uh, Hickman with the ball right here. Timmy screen and looking for Nemhard. I think he hits three straight threes at some point during this highlights. Uh, I think he did hit. I think he hit three or four in the second half right there he's hitting uh, Bolton off of movements and Bolton had a great game from three and you know he's hitting the open shooter and you know off of movement Bolton's gonna hit that and just look at the Gonzaga offense Nemard is operating uh, very very well here Texas Tech doing an admirable job on the defensive end but he just feeds Timmy mismatch you know you can only only do so much in the defensive end before giving up a mismatch to a guy like drew timmy is just dominating on the offensive end look at that you know drives all the way down draws the defenders in and hits it out to the shooter stays under control doesn't turn over the ball that is very impressive and that type of dynamic ability is what's going to shine in the nba floor and yeah the main worry is does he have enough sample size of this stuff like he isn't doing this all the time once again attacking the 6 a kevin o'banner who's just <laughs> he can't really keep up with a guy like uh andrew nemard who uses that quickness extremely well in going into those step back jump shots and yeah uh once again he's gonna look for that three uh he's gonna hit a three right here and just you know he's killing it uh <laughs> defenders in the late close out and he hits the three. And we see a bit of a press from Texas Tech, a 1-2-2 two, uh, two, two zone. And how is Nemard going to dissect the zone, passing it back and forth? About to get trapped, stays under control, and hits... That's... I'm forgetting who that is. That's Watson. Anton Watson. I was blanking on his name for a second there. Saw uh, Hickman hitting Nemard back to the red hot uh, Bolton for three. And he knocks it down. Uh, off of motion once again just hitting the guy who's red hot and there it is once again creating in the mid-range shot and that's just when i was like man i got i gotta make a video about this kid he's just killing it in the mid-range attacking the ankles making you know if he's seeing a guy going downhill it, he's a step too late he's ready to make that shot and take that shot you know and there he is open for three again as a red hot night for him uh, during that second half and he's not too he's not going to slow down and not take that shot solid defensive possession as well right there uh just watching and see a guy drive where is his defender uh the guy he's supposed to be defending is out there uh rolling out to or popping out to the three but he decides to stick in the paint and it was a good decision look at that just forcing the missed bucket and he comes down to the other end and I'm trying to remember what this bucket was uh can't quite remember 
What does he do here? Oh yeah, he just attacks and just goes right past his man. His defender is trying to block him off from going left right there. And he says, what are you doing, man? You're giving, you're giving up the free layup. And that's exactly what he does. He finishes in the paint. Uh, Watson doing a solid job of sealing off right there, not letting the defender in. And I think that's about it. Uh, I think y'all can see there's a lot of tabs open from doing research for this stuff. And I've lost my... Where, where did it go? Where... I, I don't know where it went. Anyways, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed and you made it all the way to the end, please consider hitting subscribe. If you made it all the way to the end, you probably want to see more of my content. So hit, yeah, hitting subscribe is the best way to do that. Anyways, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Good. Bye.